Hello, welcome to this very special edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at the Jazz Standard here in New York City. In commemorating the 80th birthday of saxophonist and composer Wayne Shorter, trumpeter and composer Wallace Rooney tonight is doing something very, very special this week. He's performing with the Wallace Rooney Orchestra, which comprises of some of the most important jazz as well as orchestral musicians here in New York, as well as abroad, and they're performing Wayne Shorter's Lost Composition, Universe. If you might recall, Universe was written in the late 1960s when Wayne Shorter was with Miles Davis's unit and for years he thought that it was either stolen or he had thrown it away but he found it six years ago and he gave it to Wallace Roney and asked him one to perform it as well as bring new life to his compositions. Tonight I sat down earlier with Wallace and we talked about the legacy and importance of Wayne Shorter. We also talked about what Universe means to him and also we sat down and talked about another pivotal milestone in Wallace's career. As you might know he has a brand new high note records release called Understanding and it features his brand new quintet and we also sit down and we talk about and reflect the life and legacy of Mogu Miller. If you might recall early on in Wallace's career when he was playing with the legendary Tony Williams he and pianist Mo Grumiller were in his unit and we sit down and reflect the legacy of this great pianist. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the sounds of the Wallace Roney Orchestra Performing Universe live here at the Jazz Standard here in New York City. A major feat for you. You are coming outside of Wallace Roney and paying respect to one of the most 
important figures of the last 50 years of jazz. Yeah, thank you. Paying tribute to Wayne Shorter. Paying, not, it's not tribute. Ex, um, extending what he's, what he's doing or um, being part of the whole. I, I like to say it like that. But Wayne is the greatest tenor saxophonist, soprano saxophonist, and composer of this era. You know, and I, I'm proud to say he's one of my best friends, and he's a beautiful human being. He's a beautiful artist. He's a sensitive, creative person, and um, I love him, you know. Explain the concept of universe. I understand that this, he, he lost this, and as of the last, what, five or six years, he found it, and he gave it to you, and he wanted you to play it. Wayne had written a couple songs, he a couple pieces, um, works. Let's put it like that: Legends, Universe, Twin Dragons, and another tune that um, called Utopia that I recorded as well. These things w never was played, yeah, he, and they were lost. And um, people, and I think Wayne kind of forgot about it you know for years you know after just going through life and doing things and then somebody had called him and they had read about him writing this and people started inquiring so Wayne it, it made you no know, someone went and looked in the Library of Congress and saw that it was listed so then that made Wayne start to look for these and then Wayne found this music and he called me and we talked about it and we talked about doing it and um, he gave it to me. He said, look, I want you to do this. No one else can do this. I want you to do it, you know. And um, I, thank, I thank him to this day, you know. Yeah. Now, Universe is an orchestral piece. And he wanted Miles and his quintet to record it. But what happened to, how come the group never recorded it? Universe and Legends is, right. you know, are orchestral pieces. And the reason why they didn't record it, and it's another one, a 5-4 piece that's untitled that we did. The reason why they didn't record it, because at the, the band was starting to break up. 68, they were starting to break up. You know, Tony, well, Ron left, Tony left, Herbie left, Wayne left in 70, 69, 70. So all of a sudden, you know, the impetus to do this, and um, it was written with, with those creative minds, you know, in mind. And, uh, you know, with that, they just kind of let it go, you know. Gil Evans, it was that to be that with Gil Evans' band, you know. But Wayne, the thing that makes this unique is it's not Gil Evans' orchestration. It's Wayne's orchestration. Usually Miles is doing stuff, even if it's his own tunes, that Gil orchestrated or arranged. This is Wayne. This is from the mind of Wayne Shorter, you know.
tell me how you put this band together because David Weiss is the, the, the music director for this. No, David Weiss is the conductor. I'm the music director. It's mine. The arrangements is mine. Wayne gave it to me for that. The idea is mine. What happened was, I was um, go I've been trying to do it, and I had, I couldn't get nobody interested to record it. And after a while, I needed to hear what this music sound like. So I started calling great musicians over, like Steve Torre and Clifton, and people would come over, and we would look at the score and try to decipher the, the music. And we only could go so far. Then um, my wife, who's who's a um, music teacher as well, she started copying the parts out. You know, and she was she's as much as in this as we were. So um, we got the music together, and then we went to a studio to try to um, get a demo of it. Then David Weiss called me a year later, and he heard about it, and he wanted to see if I would give him the music and he feature me. I said no. I see, he said, well, could I be part of the band? I said, sure, you could play third, you know, play trumpet on it, you know, in the trumpet section. He said, I think I can help you get it, you know, get it moved. I said, well, come on, let's do it. And what, he went from that to wind up helping copy the parts as well, and then he, he became the conductor because I can't play and conduct at the same time. But the direction of the music, everything, I had to take credit because Wayne trusted me with that. It's not nobody. That's not like I'm bragging. It's me. It's me. It's Wayne trusted me with that, and he trusted my ideas with it. You know because I love him so much. I studied everything he did in Miles and Train, and you know then he said, and then use your own imagination. So, how long did it take you guys to really write the charts out and arrangements for the different? musicians in your orchestra tonight as well as practice this because I mean listening to this whoo it's 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 exhausting well when when my wife did it she did it by herself and that was a long time um, and she did legends I believe she did in some of universe and then we started really trying to um, she was working so then we got a copyist a professional copyist to finish it out and it took about I don't know, it took a while, but we got the parts, we got the parts, and we got the parts for everything, and then David would um, look over some of it, and some of it needed correcting, you know, and he would do some correction, and I would look at the parts, and I'd say, we need to add this from this, and it took a while, but we got it, you know, maybe it took a month, maybe.
Wallace, we lost a very, very dear friend to the to the jazz community, and um, you played with him when you were playing with Tony Williams, and I'm talking about Mogru Miller. Give me your reflections on Mogru and what he means to jazz. Well, you know, Mogru is one of the greatest m musicians of our generation, you know, and he was the bright light of all the piano players. He was he was really serious about playing the piano. I mean, he was serious about loving McCoy and Oscar Peterson and Phineas Newborn and Herbie and Chick. I mean, that's he lived for that, and that was that's that was his life mission. And along with that life mis mission, he was a beautiful human being. And I know everybody says it, but it's true. Mulgrew was the kind of guy. Always had a smile, always had something nice to say, always found a silver lining in everything. Man, I remember, he was, and he was, I, he was my best friend. I remember one time we was on the road and we got in a fight because um, of something. Miles had made a crack about McCoy and I was hanging with Miles. So I was taking Miles' stance. I was, Miles, yeah, da 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 da. And Mulgrew wasn't agreeing with me and I was, we were talking back and forth and. I, after a while, I said, I don't want to talk to you no more. So I turned my back on him, and um, I wouldn't speak to Margu for about a week, maybe two weeks. <laughs> and one day, this fool comes knocking on my door in the hotel, and I had all the lights down. You know, I like everything to be like a nightclub, you know, the nightclub atmosphere. He knocks on my door, and I'm looking at him hard, like, what? he walked right by me. He went and sat on my chair in the dark. And I went, and I, I just sat on my bed. I laid in my bed. He sat there. He said, "Ronnie, we've been friends too long. I ain't gonna I ain't get out of here until you say something to me." <laughs> I just laughed, man, and we hugged. And that's the way he was. He was just, you know. And then he, then he, then he said, "By the way, when you weren't talking to me, you missed some of my best jokes." I, had. <laughs> I said, "Oh, small girl." That was my friend, man. I, I, when he died, I, 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 oh man, I can't even express it. Then another one of my dear friends died today, Steve Berrios. Whoa. He was one of my best. He was also one of my best friends. We were, um, we used to call each other um, Count Dracula and Professor Van Helsing. He was Professor Van Helsing, and we had all our inside, you know, language that people didn't understand. Wayne understood it, by the way. Philly Joe and Art Blakey, Miles, but me and Van Helsing, Steve Berrios, I'm, I'm, I'm in shock, man. That'll do it again for another edition of the Pace Report, reporting live here at the Jazz Standard here in New York City. I'd like to personally thank Wallace Rooney for his time, as well as members of the Wallace Rooney Orchestra here at the Jazz Standard, also the staff and management of the Jazz Standard for their warm hospitality. As always, please visit my website, www.thepacereport.com, for my weekly column as well as my past segments. Until next time, remember if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Till next time, peace.